Babe of the day. Babe of the day. Judy Landers. Judy Landers. Oh. When you think of ditzy blonde ladies you used to see on TV and in movies all the time from the 1970s to 90s, Judy rates pretty high on the list. She wasn't ditzy in real life, but it was her popular on-screen persona. Actually, she was quite bright. Judy is the younger sister of Audrey Landers by two years. I've always liked both of them, and they frequently appeared together in movies and television shows. In 1983, they even did a non-nude pictorial together in Playboy magazine. They looked a lot alike, and it was easy to confuse them by appearance alone. There were differences, however. Judy usually stuck to comedy roles, where Audrey would do comedies, dramas, even some offbeat stuff. Both of the sisters had figures, but Judy showed off her body more. Judy was famous for her busty figure. Audrey generally kept her hair straight, while Judy's hair was often poofy. Unlike Audrey, Judy doesn't have a lot of famous standalone credits. She's just famous for being her. I don't like using the term character actress because I think it's overused, but Judy would certainly fit that term. The thing is, I would rather see Judy Landers on screen than a hundred serious dramatic actresses. Where serious actresses kind of run together and become hard to separate, Judy is in a class by herself. She was a series regular for all 75 episodes of the quirky sitcom Madam's Place from 1982 to 83. Besides that, she did many, many guest appearances on popular TV shows of the day sometimes appearing in one series many times over. These shows include The Love Boat, Happy Days, Charlie's Angels, Vegas, BJ and the Bear, The Jeffersons, Buck Rogers, Chips, Fantasy Island, The Fall Guy, Night Court, L.A. Law, ALF, The Match Game, Knight Rider, and The A-Team. She was also in a number of movies, both theatrical and made for television. There was one she did in 1985 that was quite peculiar for a number of reasons. It was called Hell Hole and Judy was the lead. It was a women in prison film and not meant to be funny. It was also quite crazy and intense. She played an amnesiac who was thrown in a sanitarium where a crazy female doctor performs lobotomies on her patients. This may be proof that Judy Landers is capable of handling a serious role. It's just not a part that a lot of people want to see from her. There was another one she did that same year that didn't really seem to fit her. This was called Deadly Twins and she starred with her sister Audrey. I do think this could have been a good movie but it had a few things going against it that made it come off like an unintentional schlocky mess. First of all, the filming looks like it was done by a college student. Most B-movies were filmed better than this, even in 85. Second, most of the cast, besides the Lander sisters, are pretty poor actors. The premise is interesting enough. The sisters play twins who are budding performers. They get raped. After they recover, the sisters find out the police have let their attackers go. Now they are out to get their own brand of justice. I don't like seeing Judy do serious stuff, and this is even a bit too serious for Audrey. If it was done right, it could have been awesome, but as it is, it's a little too hard to watch. Judy had a big part in the comedy movie Stewardess School from 1986. This ended up being very big on video and played regularly on cable, particularly the Comedy Central channel, for many years. That same year, she had a small but memorable role in the awesome John Candy comedy, Armed and Dangerous. In 1989, she starred with Audrey in another movie called Ghost Rider. This was cool. Judy played a Hollywood starlet, a Marilyn Monroe type, who was suspected to have killed herself years earlier. When our writer, played by Audrey, 
moves into her Malibu home, the ghost of Judy appears and asks Audrey's help to prove that her boyfriend was the killer. Another movie she did in 1989 that was quite amusing was the sci-fi comedy Dr. Alien. She was the sexy female lead and for much of the film appears to be the antagonist, but by the end she redeems herself and goes back to her planet. In 1990, she was the leading lady of the comedy Club Fed, playing the typical Judy Landers character that we know and love. She is a gangster's girlfriend, wrongfully sent to a white-collar prison referred to as a Club Fed. The hero of the movie is played by Lance Kinsey, best known as the not-too-bright Lieutenant Proctor in the Police Academy movies. In this movie, he plays an undercover FBI agent, posing as an inmate to investigate corruption. During the movie, he falls in love with Judy, who wouldn't, and clears her name while putting the bad guys where they belong. From 1995 to 97, she created, wrote, and starred in a PBS children's show called The Hugabug Club with her sister Audrey. Their mother Ruth, who was also a knockout by the way, helped them create the show and produced it. Ruth has often worked with her daughters. This show is for very young children, but it did quite well at the time. It was aired as reruns until 2000 on PBS, but has also aired in many other countries. Videos of the show were also released. It's cute for little kids, and for being a simple PBS show, it was a pretty good production, complete with puppets. In 2006, she and Audrey, with Ruth's help, made and starred in the family adventure film Circus Island, also known as Circus Camp. Since then, she's cut down on her screen appearances considerably. Judy Landers is a fun celebrity from a time when women were really sexy in TV and movies and comedy was truly funny. I miss seeing her around. Is it any wonder I've dubbed her? Babe of the day! Babe of the day! <laughs>